Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be singing at his pleasure. Who ate sex? If you care to job with us in read him, old hymn book is 310. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, thy weary one, lay down, thy head upon my breast. We're going to sing as it was lying. Uh, I heard
we thank God again for the hymn choir. Give God praise for them once again. And as you're giving praise for the hymn choir, let's thank God for the ushers at the floor, for the sound crew, for the greeters in the hall. And thank God that we're here today, and certainly the Lord just keeps on blessing us. Anybody is blessed and know you're blessed. Anybody don't mind just thanking God for your many blessings. Uh, good to be in the house of the Lord, and certainly we thank God for every opportunity to hear a word from the Lord. And today we're going to be uh, bringing this word from Psalms number 122, Psalms 122. Uh, in its entirety, Psalms 122, and I will be reading the New King James Version of Psalms 122, um, and if once you find that, it's, it's going to be on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, you can find that, and if you would like to stand, you may do so in the reading of this word coming out of Psalms 122, and that is in the New King James Version of Psalms 122. Listen to the psalmist as he shares with us this word, starting in verse number one. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel and to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For the thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they uh, prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren, brother and companion, I will now say, peace be with you all. Final verse, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Peace be within your walls and peace and, uh, and prosperity be in your palace. We're going to speak today from this word, security in the house of the Lord security in the house of the Lord. One more time, security in the house of the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me, God? We thank you as we come today, and we ask, God, that you would come and lead us in this time of conversations about your word, about Psalms 1 and 22. God, would you please come with your Holy Spirit and give this preacher everything that he needs. And then, God, would you come with your Holy Spirit that this word will find, will find good soil, that it will uh, soak in, and that we might be stronger people as we believe that we don't eat by, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. We thank you, God, for your bread today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints of God say amen. amen. So we are looking at this topic called security in the house of the Lord. And when you consider security in the house of the Lord, you have to think of it in three different perspectives. One, security in the past house. Somebody say the past house. And then security in the current house and also security in the future house. If you would bear with me, let me first of all talk about security in the past house. Uh, when I say security in the past house, the first thing that I am considering, it says our feet shall stand in the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built a city that is compacted together. What we're looking at here are words from the great uh, King David, amen. Not only was David a king, not only was he a man after God's own heart, but David was also a psalmist. And what David allows us to do is to peek in at what was happening in the past house. Somebody say past house. And in the past house of the Lord, first of all, it was located in Jerusalem. 
Now, Jerusalem was that great city of God, that great city uh, which means the house of, of peace. And within the walls, not only were there walls around Jerusalem, but there were also gates that was in the walls. Everybody still here with me. And there were uh, 12 gates in the walls of Jerusalem. For example, there was a sheep gate, and there was a fish gate, and there was a dung gate, and there was a valley gate. And I ain't going to list all the gates because that's all I got on my sheet. And amen. <laughs> but I want you to know that they, they, there was security found within the gates of the wall. Now, I want you to know the people of Israel, when they would come to these festivals, they couldn't wait to get into Jerusalem because that was a place where they uh, felt and they, and they, and they uh, had the presence of peace and security. But not only was it just a place or a city that was called Jerusalem that had walls and gates around it, but there was something very special in the, in the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, anybody want to say, preacher, what is it? What is it? Somebody say, what is it? Somebody say, what is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's the house of the Lord was there. It was the temple of God that was there in Jerusalem. And let me tell you right now that that temple was a very, very special place because it was the temple that was that David wanted to build, but God said, no, that's not your calling. That's not your purpose. He said, you are more of a man of war, but he said, my son Solomon uh, will build the temple. Y'all see here with me? And in the temple of God, there were three different uh, uh, compartments, or uh, it consisted of three different parts, amen. There was the outer courts, amen. And then not only was there an outer courts, but there was a holy place. And y'all still here with me? Not only was there a holy place, but there was a place called the holies of holies. Now, let me just kind of let you know that kind of uh, uh, is, is consistent with the fact that there are three parts of us, three parts of man. There is a body, there is a soul, and there is a spirit. Y'all here sit with me here today. And so what was happening in the day is that the people couldn't wait to get to the house of the Lord because that is where they could give thanks. Amen. And that's a good place right now to give thanks, even right now, because we're in the house of the Lord. Somebody go ahead and give thanks to the Lord because you're here right now. And so it was a place to give thanks, but it was also a place for them to hear the word of the Lord. And when you hear the word of the Lord, you got to understand there are going to be some word that sometimes will cut you. Can I get some help in the house here today? When the God begins to talk about his commandments, he began to talk about his laws and all of his, uh, his ordinances. And, but they would come and listen to the word of the Lord. And that's where verse 5 picks up. It says, for the thrones are set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. And so the people were, they were excited about being in Jerusalem, and they were even more excited about being in the house of the Lord. But let me tell you, there was a problem that came up because of the fact that the people began to have false security. Somebody say false security. They had false security in the house of the Lord. For example, they, were, they thought they were secure in their race as the Israelites. Can I get some help here? They thought that they had security in the fact that they were sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And then they also thought they had security because they were in the physical walls of Jerusalem. Or they thought they had security because they were in the physical walls of the temple. Amen. And these Israelites like they, they began to value their race more than their God. I can't get no help here today. They began to evaluate. They began to see uh, a value in the, in the walls and the gates uh, rather than God and in and, and the temple rather than God. And they began to fall away from God. They began to diso be disobedient to God. They uh, forgot about uh, the commandments and the statutes that they were supposed to live upon. And they began to, uh, they forgot and they became very religious people. Can I get some help in the house here today? And I'm so glad I learned a long time ago. I know y'all y'all might get mad with me. They ain't talking, give me that old time. I don't want no old time religion. I'm sorry. No, I want a new and fresh relationship. Anybody in the house here today? Because a religion is nothing more. Let me tell you what, we all have practiced religion today. I guarantee you, I, I, I can show you right now. Did you wash your face when you woke up? I'm looking for some crust now. Let's 
Amen. That's religion. Religion is just coming. But I'm so glad I learned that when you come to, when it comes down to church, it ain't about just coming because you're coming. Can I give some help here? But we come because we have great expectations that God is going to speak to us and God is going to turn some things around and God is going to heal us and we're going to be better people for it. And so right here, I like the way uh, they described what was happening in the day of the, the past house because the people had false security. And, I, and so when they began to have, to get their, their minds were all messed up, I want you to know what God does whenever we, he needs to get a word to us, he can know how to get a word to us. So he, he called some of his prophets, amen. Y'all know the prophets of God, Elijah and Jeremiah and Isaiah. But Jeremiah speaks to us right here. And Jeremiah began to tell them, he said, well, hold on, hold on now. I'm going to let you know that, uh, he said, the Lord has begun to see something. He said, uh, he said that the Lord the Almighty says, cut down the trees and build a siege, a, a, ran, a ramp against Jerusalem. The city must be uh, punished. He said, it is filled with uh, uh, oppression. And he says that there's violence and destruction all around the city. And there's sickness and there's, uh, uh, there's wombs all around the city. And I want you to know, you ought to look around right now because you ought to see some stuff going on that we are on the same pattern and the same path as Jerusalem. Amen. But the thing about it, the people never did, they never really paid attention to the prophets. Like some of, the, some of y'all ain't paying attention to the preacher right now. Right? I ain't mad at you. I know that's just the way it is. That's why I have to keep repeating stuff over and over and over again. But they, uh, but they didn't pay any attention. Uh, and, they, and so what they ended up doing, they began to uh, uh, focus on false security. But can I go ahead and help somebody right now? There's only one perfect security, and his name is God Almighty. There's only one perfect security, and his name is Jesus the Christ. There's only one perfect security, and that's the Holy Ghost. And so uh, I talked about the past uh, house, but can you uh, allow me to talk about the current house? Can I talk about the current house just a minute? Uh, somebody say, preach, preacher. Let me talk about the current house because I think there's a significance in the current house. But before I go on to the, uh, from, from the past house to the, uh, to the current house, what was the problem with the past house? Amen. You know what's the problem? People. And I'm on, let me roll back down. Let me roll back to the current house. Now, we're, we're in the current house, and I, and I like the way uh, he says in the current house. He says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, we're in another dispensation now because now Jesus Christ has come, and he has come to establish his house. Well, now, I don't think I got, to, I got to convince some people of that because Jesus said when they were coming out of uh, Caesarea, he said to the, to the disciples, who do people say I am? And some said that you John the Baptist. Some said that you are Elijah. But who do you say? And he says, uh, Peter said, well, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And I like the way uh, the Jesus said unto him, Simon Barjona, you didn't say that out of flesh and blood, but it was revealed to you from heaven. And he says, uh, by your, 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 your testimony, by your confession of faith, he said, Peter, you are uh, the rock and I will build what? My church, which is I will build my house. And so I'm talking about the current house right now. And so God begins to build the current house through Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm in the current house. Anybody glad to know you're in the current house? And can I help you right now? You're not in the current house of this structure. But there's another house, and it's a house not built by hands. And his name is what? Jesus the Christ. I'm glad to know I'm in the house of Jesus the Christ. And when I get excited about that, I'm going to tell you why I get excited about the current house, because I need to tell you that we are related to each other. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah, man. We, did you know, and look at the next to your brother and your sister. You know you're related to them. Now, I know this family. Y'all got blood. I'm talking about some of us. Look around. We are related. But here's the thing is that our relationship has to do with Jesus to Christ. For this is what he says. He says, uh, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. Jesus adopted us, and now we can say, Abba, Father. And he says, the spirit, therefore, testified that our spirit, that we are children, what? Of God. Not only are we children, but we are heirs. Somebody say, I'm heirs. Not only am I heirs of God, but I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you right now, your status is already improved because of your relationship with God. 
And so we are related to God, but not only are we related that way, but we have, we have been created as a new spiritual being through Jesus Christ. We are created as a new, somebody say new. But he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So let me just stop and just stop your roll right there. God ain't trying to change you. And you ought to stop trying to change other people. God ain't trying to change your, he, what he's trying to do, he's trying to tell you this. He ain't trying to change your mind. He's trying to give you a new mind. Can you, can you understand what I'm saying? See, I think sometimes we get this wrong. God is not trying to change your, your ways. He's trying to give you a new way. He's not trying to change your ideas, but he's trying to give you a new idea. Because if you really knew who you really were in Jesus Christ, you would not be afraid of nothing, and you wouldn't be acting like you act right now. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me today, but I need some people to understand. God said, listen, I'm creating a new creature. I, I, I'm glad one day I decided I ain't trying to change something, but I'm stepping into my new. Anybody in the house, I'm just stepping into my new. Step into your new identity. Step into your new purpose. Step into your new image. And we be, you know, we be praying, Lord, change him. Change that boy. Change that girl. God ain't trying to change nobody. He's trying to make you new. Don't you understand? There's a newness. And when you get the newness of God, nobody ain't got to tell you to stop going to the wrong place. Stop hanging out at Big Leg, Big Leg Sally's house. Stop picking up the bottle. No, nobody got to tell you that because now you are what? A new creature. And new creatures of Jesus Christ know how to act. They know how to talk to people. They know how to love. They know how to lift up holy hands. They know how to praise God. Ain't nobody got to tell them it's time to praise God. They already, they already know because they're new. They're new. Hallelujah. So we're in this current house and we have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we have a reason to be happy. We have a reason to, re to be rejoicing. We have a reason to celebrate. We have a reason to say, I was glad when they said to me, let's, let us go into the house of the Lord. And let me just help you out right here. This is why, we're, this is why we are a church, a current house of God, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May, the, the pro prosper, may they prosper who love you. But let me help you. Sometimes I know we take that scripture and we say we're supposed to be praying for a place over in the Middle East. Well, you need to pray for that place in the Middle East, but you better pray here too. But my thing is that you understand what God is saying, though, is that he has declared us to be the house of God. And so what now we have a purpose. The purpose, some people say, I don't understand why I go to church. It's right here. To pray for people to prosper. To pray for peace. Somebody say pray for peace. Because the reality is that a lot of us got some jacked up lives. I know we go to church and everything, but it ain't all rosy. It's not all pretty. But some of us have been tossing and turning all last night. I know you ain't going to tell you, you ain't going to raise your hand on that. Some of us been walking the floor worried, but I want you to know you ought to thank God right now because you're in a house that's getting ready to release peace. Peace I give unto you. Peace that I give you, not as the world give it unto you, but let not your heart be troubled. Receive the peace. Receive the shalom of God. Receive that the everything is well in my soul. And so he says, peace be within the walls. He's talking about within us. Peace within, within the palace. Peace be with you. Prosperity be upon, upon you. Peace be up, upon you. And let, let us seek the, the good things that God has for us. And so that here gives us a purpose for the current house. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, uh, I want us to make sure that we don't, we don't get so to the point where we can also make a mistake just like the Israelites did because we can have a false sense of security. Yeah, we can have a false sense of security because some of us, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't mind saying I'm black and I'm proud, but black ain't going to save you. <laughs> oh, by the way, white ain't going to save you either. Brown is not going to save you either. And so we have a world that's all split up and mixed up. But I want you to know that is no security in your race. There is no security in the walls of Harrisburg or Charlotte or Concord or Kannapolis. Can I help somebody here today? There's no security in the police. 
Because the reality is if, if something happens, you need the police right away. Can't nobody be like you with Jesus, but Jesus can be right there on the spot right now. You got to wait five minutes or ten minutes. But I want you to know, when you know that you have a Savior, the Lord Jesus is here right now. So we, we don't have security in our police and in our, in our uh, military. There's no security in CPI or ADT. Amen. And there's no security in just being in the church. But I want you to know some true security. The true security is in God Almighty. The true peace is in God Almighty. The true rest in, is in the God Almighty. So while we're here on this earth and we're going to be in this current house, I want you to just help me. I'm trying to help somebody here because sometimes we don't understand why bad things happen to good people. And I need you to know that because of where we are right now, we have an opportunity to be, have our minds in heaven, but we're still seated on the earth. Can I get some help here? And as long as we are on this earth, there's going to be some stuff that we ain't going to like. There's going to be violence. There's going to be wars. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be pain, suffering, headaches, trouble, misunderstandings. There's going to be tornadoes, hurricanes, flood, fire, and earthquakes. There's going to be cancer, a heart disease, liver failure, kidney failure asthma, flu, and pneumonia. They're going to be unemployment. They're going to be uh, bankruptcy. They're going to be debt. They're going to be foreclosure. They're going to be evictions. But I got some good news for you. What am I, here's my good news right here. God has a plan. Somebody say God has a plan. You ought to go ahead and shout right now because God has a plan. Because see, the problem, the problem with the past uh, house is sin. You know the problem with the past house of just flesh and blood. And guess what? The problem in the current house is the same thing. What? Flesh and blood. But I'm getting ready to close. I want you to know there's another place coming. And this is our perfect security, which is in the future house. And I'm glad to understand. I like the way it was spelled out because you got to understand that in this future house, the flesh and blood is not allowed. As a matter of fact, I want you to know right now so when you get there, you understand God's getting ready to do a new thing. As a matter of fact, he's getting ready to give us a glorified body. So you can't go to heaven like you are right now. That's why I'm always minded, I'm reminded of people, and they say, hey, you know, I've been sick a long time, but just hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother, because uh, it, this too is going to pass. And I like the way John describes it. He says, uh, you know, God is not going to take the old stuff and make it new. Can I get some help? He's going to make it new right up the, off, the, um, off Jump Street. Y'all know that word? He's going to make it new. He says, and John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first one, the first one had to pass away. And John said, I saw a holy city and what? A new Jerusalem. God's getting ready to do something new. A new Jerusalem is coming down. And he says then, he says, uh, what I like about it, he gives us some descriptions of what this new Jerusalem and this new house is going to look like. Let me, first thing is going to be God is going to dwell with his people. See, we ain't got to come to no church. There won't be no church in heaven. Can I get some help? Because God's going to be just as close as, uh, you know, as close as this space is to me right now. God's going to be all over it. Because he's going to dwell, what, with his people. Amen. And not only will he dwell with his people, there's going to come a time when he ain't got to worry about no pain no more. Oh, I wish I had some people in the house that ain't got to worry about. Uh, there's going to be no crying. There's going to be no death. There's going to be no sorrow. Why? Because we're going to be in the place where God is and where God is their perfect health. There, Where God is their perfect wellness. Where God is there is perfect joy. Where God is their perfect peace. Where God is there is hallelujahs every day. Where God is. And so I want you to know there's a new Jerusalem and it's going to be filled with his glory. I like that right there. Because what I, what I get to understand is this. It's just like there's a sun and a moon. That's just a type uh, that tells us that Jesus, God, is going to do something new. There won't be no sun in heaven. Y'all need to read Revelation. I know people kind of look at me and like, you know what? Because there ain't going to be no need for no sun because Jesus Christ is the light. Can I get some help here? He is going to be the light. So every time we wake up, uh, uh, you know, we're going to be able to see the light. The light is going to be always on. You got to worry about the light. The light's going to be on all the time. And finally, as I close, he said, we're going to come together. Can I get somebody to praise God right there? We're going to really come together. And when we come together, it won't be no black church. It won't be no Hispanic church. It won't be no Chinese church. It won't be no Asian church. It's going to be one church. I'm hallelujah. And we ought to act like we're in one church right now. We ought to go ahead and give God praise because he said there's going to be one church. And everybody's going to come together. And everybody's going to give God praise. So... 
That's what I wanted to share with you today. And I need you to know when we all come together, it says, and when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In his mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. And I can say, when we all come together, what a rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Well, before we move on, we got something else planned for you today, and I just wanted to, to get that done. Uh, but I do want to take some time out before we go to the next step is to see if there's somebody here today who is in need of the future house. See if there's anybody today, not only are you in need of the future house, but see, here's the thing. We can, have, we can be in the current house now, but you need to say yes to the Lord. And so we're going to ask you right now, the doors of the church are open. When I say the doors of the church are open, I'm not talking about the doors literally. I'm saying God's heart is open. And let me tell you something. His heart is always open. It's not just on 11 o'clock on Sunday, but his heart is always open. So all we're looking for is somebody who says, I want to walk through the door. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman or boy or girl hear my voice, he says, open the door. If you're here today, I'm going to invite you to come to the house of the Lord right now. Make your presence to the Lord. Let the Lord know that I want to be a part of this current house and this future house. No need to try to straighten everything up because you can't straighten it up. All you can do is say, God, here am I. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home, you haven't been baptized, you, you don't have a church home, we, we ask you to come right now. Would you please come right now? If you're here today, just, 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 if you heard something that resonated with you, would you please come right now? Is there anybody who would like to come and say yes to the Lord? This is your time right here. Uh, we're inviting you to come. Uh, it is your time. Is there anyone who will say yes, Lord, I need, I need you. I need a church that's going to pray for me. See, I just want to love about church. And Oak Grove is one of these churches that we ain't trying to get in your business. As a matter of fact, we don't care. We don't care nothing about what you've been through, where you've been from. All we need to know is are you ready now to have some praying people around you? If you are in a place and you're not being spiritually fed, won't you come? If you're in a place where you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior King, would you please come? Is there one today?